much and good morning everybody. It's Thursday the 25th of March 2021. Uh, this is a meeting of the Licensing Subcommittee of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea in to determine the case of Caprice Holdings Limited uh, in and around 272 Brompton Road. Uh, my name is Greg Hammond. I'm counsel for Courtfield Ward, which is the ward immediately to the west of the one in which the site of the, uh, the the site is situated. Uh, I'll be chairing the hearing today, and I'd like my colleagues to uh, introduce themselves in turn and make any declarations. So, starting with Councillor Williams, please. Yes, I'm Councillor Charles Williams, Councillor for Redcliffe Ward. Uh, I have no um, interest to declare, but I, I should state. Um, as some uh, of the parties may know, I did uh, chair the uh, 2017 hearing, which um, uh, 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 relating to the uh, existing licence for part of the premises. Thanks very much, Councillor Williams and Councillor Thaxter, please. Good morning all. My name is Councillor Thaxter, Portia Thaxter, the Councillor for St. Helens Ward in the north of the borough, and I have no declaration of interest. Thanks very much, Councillor Thaxter. I will declare that um, the building manager for Crompton Court directs property management who submitted an objection also works for me up to three years ago on a building that I uh, had an interest in and where I previously lived. And I do know Gina Martini who signed that objection, but that was in a purely professional relationship. Um, so those we three are the decision makers in the case. Um, I'm now going to move on to those who are in support of us, starting with our legal officer, please. Present, Chair. And could you introduce yourself by name so everybody knows who you are? Yes, my name is Lindsay Lemisurier. I will be the solicitor advising the licensing subcommittee today. Great, thanks very much. Um, and uh, from the licensing team, uh, I think we've got two of you here today. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Fiona Johnson and I'm from the licensing team. Good morning. I'm Laura McGann, also from the licensing team. Thanks very much. And uh, we do have a number of technical officers and governance officers here helping us today. I won't ask them to introduce themselves uh, personally, but they may pop up from, from time to time. Um, next, we have one of the responsible authorities, um, present, I understand, from the Noise and Nuisance team. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please, Mr Mahaffey. Yes, good Good morning, Mr Chairman. Uh, my name's Keith Mahaffey. I'm in the Noise, noise and Nuisance team. Morning, thanks very much. And uh, for the applicant, uh, if I could ask Council, I think, Mr Walsh, to introduce yourself and introduce your party as well, please, to everybody. Yes, good morning, Chair. Um, Stephen Walsh is my name. I'm Council representing Caprice Holdings Limited, the applicant. Uh, you, we also have with us, those who may speak, Richard Clark, who you've just seen, who is a Caprice Group Operations Director, and George Jones, who is responsible for development. Um, Lisa Rinzani is also present. She's a solicitor from uh, Popleston and Allen, but she's unlikely to need to speak. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mr Walsh. And um, for the objectors, I understand uh, we have Miss Fullerton and possibly Mr Bull Williams. Yeah. Yes, we're both here. OK, good morning to you. Um, good morning. So um, just a few ground rules then uh, before we start the hearing. Um, if I could ask everybody to uh, keep your microphones on mute uh, unless you're called to speak, um, that will prevent any background noise. Please also turn off your cameras uh, to save bandwidth except when you're in a speaking part. Uh, the chat function is not monitored and it's actually quite distracting if people use it, so um, so please don't. Uh, if you do need to speak out of um, out of the, um, the the natural order of this, please put your electronic hand up, um, which you'll find on the Teams function, and I'll see that and uh, I will come to you at an appropriate moment. Um, we've had a number of documents, so I'm just going to go through the, the documents we've had so we can... Uh, uh, we'll all be on the same page of that. We had a main committee bundle, which was uh, 80 pages. Uh, then we had some extra documents from the applicant. So we had an example menu of one page. We had an operational management plan of three pages. Uh, we had an acoustic report, which started at 10 pages. It was revised yesterday to a 12 page document and then subsequently revised again to a 13 page document. Um, I 
think I know where the changes are, but the 10 page document is the one I read in detail. So when we come to that, uh, if if we need to uh, refer to it, we might need some uh, some extra help with that one. Um, we were given the 2017 decision um, document, um, which was eight pages. Uh, uh, we also had a composite list of amendments and extra conditions proposed by the applicant of four pages. And we had a potential draft conditions list from the legal officer yesterday, um, which was over six pages with 37 potential conditions on that one. So the panel has read all of these um, these documents. So um, uh, there's no need to repeat the content in your submissions to us, but please do draw, draw attention to relevant parts um, of them when you're making your cases. Uh, I need to elect a um, substitute chair just in case uh, my computer goes down or my internet goes down. I don't think uh, for a sustained period. I don't think it will, but the quorum for this uh, meeting is two councillors, so this would enable the meeting to uh, carry on if I drop out, so I can't back in, get back in uh, quickly enough. So I'd like to nominate Councillor Williams to be the substitute chair. Is that seconded? I second that chair. Thank you, and uh, hopefully that's agreed by Councillor Williams. Ag agreed. Great, thank you very much. Um, so the procedure for a, a mo uh, for the for the meeting. Um, uh, in a moment, I'll uh, I'll invite the licensing officer to outline the case for us. Um, then the applicant will have up to ten minutes to present their case, which will be followed by uh, questions from members of the, the panel and all the parties. Then I'll turn to the responsible authority um, um, to, for him to present his case in up to ten minutes, followed by the questions again. Then uh, we turn to the objectors and you'll have up to ten minutes uh, each as your separate parties to uh, present your cases and then we'll do a question session with you. Uh, we won't have a summing up. Um, I'll have advice from the legal officer uh, and then we'll um, we'll retire to make our decision. So are there any um, preliminary matters from any parties before uh, we begin? I'll just pause for a moment to see if anybody shouts. And they're not. So in which case I'm going to ask the licensing or, uh, officer to outline the case. And I'm not sure whether it's... Um, Ms. McGann or Ms. Johnson, who's presenting, but uh, over to licensing. Good morning, everyone. It'd be myself, Chair Fiona Johnson. Thanks, Fiona. Um, so today's application has been submitted by Caprice Holdings Limited for the grant for premises license. The application, which can be found at page 20 of the report, states that the address which is the subject of this application is ground floor unit 272 to 272A, and basement units two and three, 278 to 280 Brompton Road. However, we believe that the application comprises the ground floor of 272 to 276 Brompton Road and the basement of 270 to 280 Brompton Road, SW32AW. Plans showing the proposed layout can be found at Appendix C, pages 32 and 33 of the report. The ground floor of 276 Brompton Road currently benefits from a premises licence, which permits the playing of recorded music indoors, Monday to Saturday, 8am to midnight, and Sunday, 8am to 11.30pm. Provision of late night refreshment indoors, Monday to Saturday, 11 o'clock pm to midnight, and Sunday, 11 o'clock pm to 11.30. And also for the sale of alcohol on the premises, Monday to Saturday, 8 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 p.m. and on Sundays, 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. A copy of the existing licence can be found at Appendix A on pages 11 to 19 of the report. So today's application for the grant for the grant of a premises licence seeks playing of recorded music indoors Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to midnight, and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. 11:30 p.m. Sorry, provision of late night refreshment indoors, Monday to Saturday, 11 o'clock p.m. to midnight, and Sunday, 11 o'clock p.m. to 11:30 p.m. And sale of al alcohol both on and off the premises, Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11:30 p.m. And on Sundays, 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. The application also sought the granting of a non-standard timing 
to extend licensable activities from the end of permitted hours on New Year's Eve to the start of permitted hours on New Year's Day. However, this has now been amended so that licensable activities cease at 0130 hours on New Year's Eve and the premises to close at 0200 hours on New Year's Eve. The application itself has attracted a representation from Mr Keith Mahaffey, who is an Area Senior Environmental Health Officer under the Prevention of Public Nuisance Licensing Objective. A summary of Mr Mahaffey's representation can be found at pages 4 and 5 of the report, and his full representation can be found at Appendix D, pages 34 to 36 of today's papers. Eleven representations have been received which oppose this application. This includes one representation from Direct Property Limited, who are the managing agents for Compton, Compton Court, which are the flats above the site. A summary of these representations can be found on pages 6 to 9, with copies attached at Appendix E on pages 37 to 51. Council records indicate that the premises received no complaints over the preceding 12 months. Council records also indicate that no temporary event notices have been submitted in respect of this premises in the preceding 12 months. That concludes the summary of today's application. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Ms Johnson. Um, so I'm now going to turn to Mr Walsh um, to present the case for the applicants. Uh, and if you're ready to begin, uh, you've got up to 10 minutes for the presentation and then we'll move to questions. Thank you, Chair. I've got my watch in front of me so I can keep to, to that time as, as, as best I can. Um, just a quick word about the applicant, if I may. Caprice Holdings Limited uh, owns and operates some of the finest restaurants in London. It includes the original Ivy restaurant uh, near Leicester Square, Scott's Fish restaurant in Mayfair, and importantly, a number of restaurants in what's now known as the Ivy Collection, including in within the Royal Borough, the Ivy Kensington Brasserie, the Ivy Chelsea Garden, along with other restaurants such as Harry's Dolce in Basil Street and Daphne's in Draycott Avenue. Uh, Daphne's is very close by, actually. It's only about a three minute walk. And many of those premises are uh, premises which have residents above and immediately adjacent to them. Daphne's, which has been operating since the 1960s, has residents uh, immediately above. Uh, and it's important for us to, to say, because we understand the residential concerns that have been expressed in relation to this application because of what happened under the previous operators. Uh, that the venues operated by, by Caprice as a group trade in accordance with the same principles of service in the quality of food and importantly sensitivity to neighbours for, for which uh, I think Caprice is well known. There haven't been any regulatory concerns about those premises uh, which have previously been operated and still are and this application for these premises is an application for a modern European style restaurant, which will be named Caprice Brasserie, the iconic Caprice uh, ha having closed behind the Ritz um, for various reasons. And these premises as, as a premises have been used as a restaurant or brasserie for just over half a century, I think. So it has a history of that. I'll come back in more detail to um, the style of operation in a second. Uh, but just a word about the difference between this application and the existing license. It, it is sought on the same terms as the existing license, except for the fact that the sale of alcohol here also includes off sales effectively for the purpose of allowing a delivery service or unfinished wine to be taken from the premises after dinner, that sort of thing. Uh, there are also a range of proposed conditions following consultation with the responsible authorities and the residents who have made representations. And as you have been told, the proposed conditions appear in your agenda, pages 32 to 33, and, and the additional conditions which have been um, also suggested following further consultation. I don't think I'm going to take you to those pages because it is more convenient in due course to refer to your legal uh, advisor's schedule of conditions that you received more recently, which 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 incorporates all of the suggested conditions, but also adds some other issues. The 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 other aspect, of course, is that this license seeks to use 
part of the basement as a private dining room. Um, it, it, it effectively, the overall um, size of the licensed area represents an increase of just under 15%. So it's not a huge increase, though it might appear so from the plans. Uh, and the, the, the private dining room is to, is to accommodate roughly 18, maybe 20 uh, private diners. Um, I won't take you to the plans, if, if, if you don't mind, because no doubt you may have questions on them and we can answer those questions. But in essence, um, uh, uh, th th there is to be an area at the front of the premises which is reflected in the conditions uh, for which uh, a small number of tables for diners is hoped to be accommodated. But that is, of course, subject to um, uh, a pavement license that would be vacated by 10 p.m. following consultation in the hatched area on the ground floor. The consumption of alcohol uh, is, is permitted under this application without a meal, but the rest of the premises uh, will have normal restaurant conditions. Then there are stairs and a lift down to the basement where the private dining area is situated and the adjacent outside area in which the consumption of alcohol and smoking will not be permitted in accordance with the schedule of conditions is essentially for comfort for those who are there. It's right adjacent to the to the tube line. Uh, the food and style of uh, trading, it's as I've said, it's a, it's a high quality modern European menu. The Caprice menu, which we gave, which we provided to you yesterday, just gives you an indication of the kind of uh, food which would be on offer. The premises throughout is set out with dining tables and chairs. The fittings and decorations are of high quality, or will be. The ground and basement floors will operate um, in, in briefly as follows. Tables are allocated at reception on the ground floor by the maitre d. Um, uh, and customers are taken to table. And the maitre d will be assisted by a reception team of two others and a member of staff to deal with coats and so on. No vertical drinking is going to be permitted in the premises under the conditions which you will uh, have seen. Um, the basement private dining room, which as I've said, is about 18 covers, if this application is granted, uh, adjacent to the external area will be vacated by 9 p.m. And when I say vacated, I mean it won't be used by customers or by staff after that time. Again, that is following close consultation. And very importantly, any music at the premises will be background only. And uh, in case there is a concern about what background means, it is to be controlled under the proposed conditions by a noise limiting device. But you will hear a little more from a, another witness if you want to ask questions about that. There will be an any one shift, about 40 staff on duty, 20 front of house, 20 back of house. That'll include a general manager, an assistant manager, uh, head waiter, and so on. And there will be further assistant chefs and a team of about 15 in the kitchen. Uh, now, what we say about this, importantly, is that these premises will be well run, well managed, and a, you will probably tell from the number of staff, will have a very significantly higher ratio of staff to customers than is normally the case. The cost, the investment in these, these premises from a capital expenditure perspective is eight, about eight million pounds. So it's a serious venture. Um, but importantly, 350,000 pounds of that was has been invested and spent on remedying the former occupants very poor provision for uh, acoustic um, attenuation. Um, in, in essence, Capri stripped the premises out. They've stripped it out. They've looked at the fabric of it. They, they were disappointed, not to say shocked, by the poor provision that existed for acoustic attenuation before. And a, a, commission, a report has been commissioned, um, which you have in your papers, which I will touch upon briefly in a moment, because I think I've still got a little bit of time. The proposed conditions are the result of pre-consultation with Mr. Mahaffey and consultation with the residents. There was a meeting with the residents on the 19th of March. Uh, we believe that the conditions which have been proposed fully address the residents' entirely understandable 
concerns as a result of the way the premises were operated previously. I think it was operated as a sort of party venue, so far as one can tell, with very little sound attenuation and so on. Um, but that is not how Caprice Holdings intend to operate these premises, which will, which will and need to be operated in a way which does not cause difficulties for the nearby residents and those above. Um, I, I'll, I'll come back if I, just in, in a minute or two to the um, to, to the conditions themselves because we do have something to say about the schedule which has been produced. Um, but in relation to the acoustic report, because it's so much of this case is about the acoustics, um, the ACA acoustics have prepared, as you know, various versions of the report. That there were various typos that needed to be picked up. I won't take you to particular parts of it because we have here with us, I should have introduced him at the beginning, um, Rob Kant, who is the author of that report and a qualified acoustician. In short, the um, measures which have been now identified, which, which the acoustic consultant is satisfied will ensure that there is no noise breakout to the residents above and which in any event will need to be signed off by Mr. Mahaffey that he's satisfied for the same thing. It include new acoustic uh, ceilings over the restaurant area and uh, uh, over the, uh, the license area of the basement. In addition, acoustic wall and column lining throughout both ground floor and basement a resilient floating floor to the ground floor and basement area, the use of multiple small speakers for background uh, music, rather than a small number of the big large speakers that were there before, and then crucially a sound limiting device set at a level which is appropriate and agreed with, with the Royal Borough. Um, so, uh, Chair, that is the position. If I've got have I got, a, I think I may have a minute or two just to touch upon the, the conditions. And I'm now looking at the schedule produced by your by your uh, legal advisor. I think your, your 10 minutes is up, um, but I can, uh, we could start with a question on the on the schedule if, um, um, and I will start with that question uh, before I turn to my colleagues to, um, to, to explain please your, your thoughts on the schedule that um, the licensing officer proposed. Yes, well, if, if that's a, as a general question, then, uh, Chair, um, the, the, in broad terms, the, 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 the schedule represents the proposed conditions and the additional conditions uh, with some tweaks, if I could put it in that way, which were proposed following the, the consultations. They include, of course, as you will see, uh, a, a range of conditions to uh, prevent noise nuisance from impinging on the residents above. Um, they include conditions that ensure that the use of external areas is restricted. Um, in so far as the downstairs, the basement comfort area outside of the private dining room, that is to be vacated by nine o'clock. In so far as the forecourt at the front on Brompton Road is concerned, assuming a pavement license is granted, all tables and chairs are to be rendered unusable after 22, 30 hours, half past 10. But no alcohol can be consumed in that area in any event uh, from 10 o'clock um, and indeed not until 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, uh, I won't go through all of the conditions because they, uh, I suppose, speak for themselves. But we do have one or two concerns about the additional wording that was suggested by your legal officer. We don't criticise for that. It's just that we'd like to pick up a couple of things. In condition eight, uh, it was proposed by the applicants that a dedicated telephone number for, of the DPS or a duty manager should be provided to the residents. Uh, and indeed, the condition goes on to say to, to not only the residents of, um, of Crompton Court, but local residents associations. The suggestion is that it should be displayed uh, in the window of the premises in a visible way. We, 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 we ask you to consider that, that that may not be proportionate or necessary given the, the way in which the rest of that condition is drafted. And, and it certainly isn't a condition that Caprice ha have on any of their other uh, multiple licenses. And there is a genuine concern about putting a telephone number of a DPS 
or a duty manager displayed on on the window for um, for all to uh, express their concerns who have to be walking by. We think it's enough that the residents and the residents associations have it, but that's a matter for you. In relation to condition 10, uh, this is a tweaking of the CCTV condition for which, with which we're very happy, apart from one small matter. You will see in the red writing, the suggested alternative wording at the first subsection A, it is said that a member of staff who has been nominated in writing, who is conversant with the operation of the team, shall be uh, on duty at the premises. That there is a little bit of an issue about the interpretation of that, because um, if it is only to be one person, well, then there can be difficulties with that person not being on the premises and leaving for a short period of time. There are other staff members in charge. And so we think that could be resolved by interpreting it to mean that a pool of uh, staff members of a managerial level who are duly conversant with the CCTV system should be authorised in writing and nominated for the person for the purpose so that there is always one of those or more of those persons on duty to uh, attend to um, police or whoever comes onto the premises who wants to see the, the CCTV. Uh, so that's the position as far as those are our submissions about that. The, the All of the sound attenuation conditions are accepted. We've checked that with our expert, Mr. Kant. Um, there is one that we that the, the, the Caprice feel quite strongly about, and it's condition 22. The previous condition, which was suggested, was that the premises license holder should ensure that the cleaning of the premises doesn't cause disturbance to residents above. And the suggested addition is that there should be no cleaning between 11 o'clock at night and 7 in the morning. Now, that is because of the noise that cleaners can make within the premises, I suppose, potentially to residents above. But, but we are very satisfied, and Mr. Kant can help you with this, that the sound attenuation works to be carried out within the premises will allow cleaning to take place during those hours. And it's, it's very important from an operational perspective that the that, that Caprice is permitted to allow cleaning to take place during those hours. Obviously, it has to be done so as not to cause disturbance, but that is how it is done in the other premises. It's, it would present difficulties if cleaning had to be outside of those hours. Um, I, I think, uh, I'll just double check, pages are stuck together. Oh, yes, uh, condition 29, um, is a new new suggested condition by your legal officer, and, and it is that there should be meetings to discuss the operation of, with residents of Crompton Court and local residents associations. We're quite happy that that should happen, and that's something that Caprice would, would do in any event with, with local residents. And you will see on the fourth line down, it says two, three or four times a year. I think that gives you an option. Um, we, we think twice a year is enough, but we're very happy to have further meetings at the suggestion of the residents of Crompton Court if, if they wish to do so. But we think we think twice a year uh, it is 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 sufficient, but it's a matter it's a matter for you. So um, Chair, I don't think I have any more anything else to say in relation to the commission. OK, thanks for answering my question on that. I've got uh, my colleagues will have some questions for you, but I see Miss uh, Le Miserie, our legal officer, has put her hand up. So I'm going to bring her in first and then uh, and then go to Councillor Williams. So Miss uh, Le Miserie first, please. Thank you, Chair. I was just putting up my hand to say we've obviously got a condition sessions after it, all the um, everyone's had their um, say and questions have been asked. So we'll properly go over the conditions at the end, if that's OK. Uh, yes, it'll be, a, uh, but as we've had a full answer from Mr yeah. Walsh uh, there, it might possibly be a shorter session uh, later on. Yeah. So, uh, very good. Um, thank you very much. So, if I can turn to Councillor Williams, please, for your uh, questions. Um, um, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Mr Walsh, I mean, if you don't know the answer to this, I'm sure uh, some of the other party can help me. Um, when uh, did the uh, previous um, uh, operate the premises caramel cease to operate um well chair i'm, I'm going to invite either mr clark or mr or mr jones to answer that question if they know because i don't know i wonder if they could uh, 
if they I'll turn off my microphone if they can hear me and one of you can please answer that question if you know the answer. Hi, it's George Jones speaking. Um, am I right in that we're answering the question of when Caramel ceased trading? Yes. Yes. I believe um, they ceased trading when lockdown happened in March last year. I don't think they reopened post that. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes. I mean, the reason I asked was obviously there have been no complaints in the past year, and um, obviously the 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 uh, objectors may have something to say about uh, um, what, what the problems have been, but we'll come on to that later. But my um, first question was, you referred to uh, music as background music. Mr. Walsh, now, uh, I understand that uh, sometimes where a restaurant just has background music, they don't have, they don't need a license for recorded music. So would you like to comment on that? Uh, Chair, ch they, well, uh, <laughs> That, that's that's an interesting question, which we've debated uh, uh, many times. Um, uh, th th there is an argument that that is that is absolutely so, but but uh, and and but 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 we always apply for recorded music uh, for the premise just to make it absolutely clear, because the, the, uh, government guidance under Section One Eight Two, which I haven't got to, to immediately to hand. Is 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 not. It's a little like the COVID guidance, to be honest. It's not always as clear as it might be, and and so to make things very clear, uh, uh, we always Caprice always asks for um, for recorded music. Now, of course, that would mean if if you have that permission and it's not conditioned, that you can play recorded music at a level which is. Um, uh, which is suitable for dancing and that sort of thing in a party venue, but that is absolutely not what's proposed here, which is why we um, have uh, suggested uh, a condition that the background level, in answer to the question, what does background mean, which is a question I posed recently with our acoustic expert, um, it's difficult to know, but it's very easy to police if the noise limiting device is set at a particular level to ensure that that it is genuinely background music. And Mr. Kant, who is our acoustic consultant, can answer that on a more technical basis if, if, if you would like him to do so. Um, probably not. Um, I had just two other questions at the moment. Um, so firstly, uh, looking at your the plans you've submitted. Yes. The, I mean, there, there is, I mean, quite a significant bar area at the front. And you said, of course, it's going to be a restaurant and that people will only know vertical drinking. But um, as far as I can see, there's nothing to stop people coming in just for a drink and not having any food and perhaps getting very merry and quite noisy. Yeah, well, uh, it, the, 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 there's a two part answer to that question. The first, uh, you might say, say what to, <laughs> to be honest, uh, but that is that the, a number of other venues in the Caprice chain, which are absolutely food led and are absolutely restaurants, uh, have that flexibility as well. One of the main reasons for that, uh, seeking that flexibility is because in that hatched area, that's set up for diners as well. Yeah. And you can have a situation in which you will have a family or a group of people who come in, most of whom want to eat and some don't. And it allows the flexibility for someone not to have to eat and just have a drink. It also allows people to just come in and have a ha, have a have a drink if they want to but but the key point here is that the uh proposed conditions require that all persons whether they're dining or not in that area as they are required throughout the premises must be seated and they must be served by waiter waitress right changes the nature it prevents all the vertical drinking and so on so that's briefly the position about about that um, final question that actually relates to delivery service, and I think perhaps two years ago I wouldn't have been asking this, but, but it has the operation of these delivery services from restaurants has become an issue, I think, in, in, in various parts of the borough. Uh, and you didn't comment on condition 37 uh, as proposed by the legal advisor. So the question really is, is this likely to become a significant part of the, the offer? 
Well, uh, uh, Chair, uh, Caprice is not going to have a situation where there are uh, there are people hanging around outside with their with, with their motor scooters um, and you know smoking and generally causing a nuisance while they wait to have deliveries. Um, it, it will be dealt with under the management plan. That's why we don't have any concerns about that condition because th there must be a, a system in place which prevents those who are making the deliveries from, I mean, um, uh, hanging around outside the premises and parking in the streets and so on. Now, it may be that either Mr. Jones or Mr. Um, Clark, the operations director, have something to say about that. But we, we don't have any concerns at all about making sure that there's a management plan in place to monitor it. I, is there anything that, there we are, there they appear. All right. Um, I, th I think the only thing we'll add um, Richard is the um, it is in agreement with me here, but this restaurant won't have any affiliation with bike drivers or anything like that. Okay, um, thank you. But yeah, but the, you you it might become a significant part of the offer. I mean, obviously we don't know what the market's going to look like in two years' time. So. Yes, yeah, so I guess you can't obviously can't predict the future, but as as Stephen said, any 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 activity in and around our restaurant is tightly managed by Richard, his staff, and the management plan. Um, so even if our business did pivot in some way, uh, it would not affect any experience, both inside or outside, for residents, um, customers alike. Fine. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. That that's my questions for the moment. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Williams. So um, can I turn to Councillor Thaxter to see if you've got any questions, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Welsh, for your detailed um, presentation. Um, there's just one thing that crossed my mind. Um, the residents stated that there will now be two entrance exits on the main road, which is resulting in extra noise for on arrival and departure. I mean, clearly residents are entitled to have peace of mind, especially at that time of the night. How will you rectify this situation so that they'll have a more pleasurable experience in your service? Uh, yeah, well, Councillor, uh, as, as you will know uh, from the um, from the conditions that have been proposed, it's, it's, it's a very it's a very good and, le and a legitimate question, if I may say so, because quite a lot of consideration has been given to it. Um, uh, certainly, outside of operating hours, uh, the um, the staff members are to use the um, entrance, uh, as it were, down Pelham Street to the rear, uh, so to prevent that sort of coming and going um, during later hours. Uh, as to the policing of exactly how disturbance by people coming and going is monitored, I see that Mr. Jones and Mr. Clark have just come into view again. So I suspect they want to provide a better answer than I can give to that because it's very much an operational issue. Hi, Councillor. Um, just so I'm correct, the question I'm going to answer is how will we manage having an entrance on Brompton Road and an entrance on Pelham Street? Is that right? Yes. OK, I think um, the, the customer entrance is on Brompton Road. Um, the reason, so I, I guess that's just a standard one one point of entry and exit. So managed with a lobby to contain noise and also to hold the greet station where uh, Richard's reception team will welcome guests and encourage guests leaving to do so quietly. Um, some restaurants have staff going through this same entry and exit. We find if we can split them, it's better because splitting deliveries with customers uh, tends to be preferable um, from a customer experience um, point of view. And also having one entry and exit point for staff and customers actually makes it more congested. So where we can split the entrance and exits for deliveries and staff and then a separate one for customers actually reduces uh, any bottlenecks and makes for a much smoother operation. 
Um, thank you. But how will you reduce the extra noise on arrival and departure? Because residents are concerned about the noise that will be coming up on their bedroom and their sitting room. So how will you ensure that on arrival and departure, not in your premises, that residents will be able to com be comfortable with that? In, in, in all our restaurants, um, obviously, um, we attract uh, a, a clientele that befit our restaurants and we, um, we encourage people to enter quietly. We have a, um, a reception team immediately when you enter. If anyone is um, entering and behaving in a way that we don't feel is appropriate, then they won't be let into the premises. And similarly, on the way out, um, we have a team located within the lobby um, to provide help for those um, who are looking for taxis or a way home. And we have another chance there to encourage people to leave quietly. Now, obviously, if a customer then leaves and decides to, to make a disturbance, sadly, that's out of our control. However, we have put everything in our control within the building to encourage a very calm and quiet exit. Uh, and councillor, if I can just add to that, if I may, <clears throat> as I said at the beginning, the, the, the Caprice Holdings experience at other restaurants, for example, Daphne's, which is just around the corner, and Harry's Dolce and so on, with residents above and below, uh, has been such that sensitivity has had to be brought to bear in relation to the management of people coming and going. And as I've said, th those other restaurants, the, sort of the proof is in the pudding a little bit, uh, those other restaurants have been managed in a way which haven't caused difficulties with the adjacent and residents above. It's, it's a question of, uh, of discrete management, really, which is what Caprice would say they excel at. Thank you both for your response. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Thaxton. Now, uh, Thaxton, sure. now I see. Sorry, Mr. Walsh, did you want Chair, to come I'm back? So sorry, there was just one thing that I didn't mention. It, yeah, uh, please do. That's the hours uh, which are sought. They are the same hours as those which apply to the existing license. Uh, and I don't know whether that's an issue, to be honest, uh, today. But but just very briefly, we just say that those hours are within four hours. They are not of themselves excessive. Uh, they're suitable for a restaurant food-led operation and they're actually essential to the viability of the venture because if the hours are reduced you know you, you know you you end up with the situation where you've you, you've got to be finished by 10 o'clock on a Sunday or or 10 30 at weekends which is these days not not viable for a restaurant that's that's all I say and, and then if there is an issue I might need to address you further if you permit it OK, thanks, Mr. Walsh. Now, I, I see Miss Fullerton's got her electronic hand up and I, I'm not going to call you just now, uh, Miss Fullerton, uh, uh, because you're fourth in line to ask questions. But I will come to you um, because I, I've got one uh, final question arising in the, from the members, and that's the, um, the question of fire precautions. And uh, because of the history of the site, the residents have uh, understandably uh, appear to be very concerned about um, about the fires that have happened in the, the past. Um, we've had a suggestion uh, of a condition about no flammable decorations. Um, what, what do you say to that, Mr. Walsh? Uh, well, the first thing is that uh, where, where there are um, uh, displays, floral displays outside of Caprice venues, they, they are always treated um with non-flammable products they're always uh, uh, dealt with in that way because it, it is an issue and goodness knows we did see a video that that the uh, one of the residents provided uh, of of an incident where there had been a fire previously so um i think we're, we're all right about that as long as non-flammable is 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 interpreted to mean that it is treated sprayed treated with non-flammable um retardants. I, I don't actually know whether they're very much of a floral display is intended at these premises. I don't know if Mr. Clark can, or Mr. Jones can help. Um, we will have displays uh, in and outside the restaurant at various times, but councillor, it's a very good question and I've seen the video. I was actually in the street um, when uh, the day after it happened. Um, 
I'll, I'll run a sort of parallel um, um, example, you know, insofar as you keep your food in the fridge before you serve it, there are basic rules about um, fire, fire protection. And it's just plain and simple to say that the previous tenant did not adhere to any any of those rules. Um, we're happy to to say that everything we do is within the law. Our products are class O rated, which is the fire regulatory standard. And we don't put anything up inside or outside our restaurant that would breach that. Class O is a is is the building regs class, which which is requires that the the, the spread of flame over the surface should be restricted. Okay, oh. um, so in principle, um, would you be um, content with a? And we haven't heard from the objectors yet, but would you be content for, with a uh, condition about decorations being treated with um, flame retardant? Uh, spray or, or something along those lines yeah, Absolutely. yeah yes yes okay um so i don't have any further questions but we now need to move to um uh, other parties and officers so i'm going to ask the legal officer um first of all if she has any questions uh, Ms. Le Maziere. thank you chair um i don't have any questions at this stage i think it's over to uh, the responsible authority for questions yep. now. Uh, yes, responsible authority next. So, Mr. Mahaffey, and I know you had your hand up, and I think you might have been going to offer a, also offer a, a clarification about when Caramel closed, because I think it was quite a bit earlier than the, uh, the start of lockdown. Yes, that's correct, sir. It was. It went. It was. It was late. It was um, autumn 2019, because I was at the premises just after the fire took over. It never reopened after the fire. Um, I, I don't have any questions to ask at the moment. I think everything I needed has been clarified. OK, thanks very much, Mr. Mahaffey. So let me move to um, uh, the objectors, uh, uh, Ms. Fullerton, uh, Mr. Bull Williams. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you to ask questions of the uh, applicant, not to make comments, um, because your your comments come later on when you're you're making your your submissions to us. So um, over to you. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, it's in connection with the uh, frontage onto Brompton Road. As I see it from the plan, there are two front entrances there, and indeed, this is the very issue that was uh, that I was raising as an objection. It, you will see that there's one where the present entrance is beside the entrance to Brompton Court itself and one much further over. So, uh, and and this, these are the two doors and the uh, noise uh, arising from them that to which I was referring. Uh, not not the, the the side one in in Pelham Street. The, my question really is. Which premises are this license being applied for? As we see it, uh, the, there is an adjoining premises which at the moment is empty. Uh, and our various, uh, the various applications we have seen in headings refer to, among others, in Australia, to 270 to 274. Uh, Brompton Road. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, if you look through the various paperwork, you'll see this, and certainly the notice that went up referred to 270. Thanks, um, Ms. Fullerton. I think you raise a, a good point. I, 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 uh, before I turn to Mr. Walsh, I, I have to say I was also a little bit confused about exactly where the numbering lies and how the numbering relates to the uh, the plans but um uh, mr walsh perhaps you take us to the plans and answer the question please yeah it, it's it's a fair question uh but, well it's more than a fair question because i too uh, had to ask questions about it I, I think i might be asking mr jones to answer this one in in more detail as well but if it if, if it is a concern about what has been 
said to be the marble shop uh, next door. That 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 is part. Stephen, of, I, I can uh, um, I can jump uh, in if you like. Yes, please. If you go back to the plan that was just on the screen, please. Um, the 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 entrance that we're proposing at the moment is uh, is where the cursor is now. If you wiggle that around, thank you. Now the entrance that Sheila is talking about is the marble shop, which is where your cursor is now. If you can wiggle that around, you can see a door there. If you just go below that column, go down there, see a door. There's a sort of swinging door up there. There. That, if you, if everyone just pictures that in their in their mind, please go to the photo and go to that door there. No, the door there. So that is the marble shop. That is the extended area. However, we are just proposing one entrance. The reason there is a door there is for a fire exit purpose, and that's it. Do I is do I make myself clear? Um, I, I'm I'm. We're still at a loss about the door sighting because it now seems that you're planning the door uh, at at the. I mean, we, we, we're not quite sure where we stand with the door. Are you planning to move the present front door, which is is where the menu is? So if 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 whoever's managing the cursor can go over to the left, please. No, to the middle bay. OK. If we call that the middle bay and then go over to the left bay. Now to the left there. Yeah. That's where we're proposing the entrance in this application. There'll only be one entrance. Uh huh. And any other doors that you see in that picture will not yeah. be used as an entrance. Oh, fine. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I know that some of my my um, my co-residents are objecting to that, but at least we now know where you're planning to make it. There has been some serious uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fullerton. Do you have any other questions? And uh, not not at, at present, thank you. And I think you've got Mr. Bull Williams with you. Does he have any questions? Yes, he does. Yes. Okay. I um, I'm the the entrance in what is now the marble shop, which is proposed to be the new lobby area, um, has a staircase which goes to the basement. That staircase is covered with an apex glass roof, which is level with the window, my bedroom, the windows of my bedrooms. Uh, the distance being some uh, meter and a quarter, um, the apex of that roof is a meter and a quarter from my bedroom window, and the base is 10 centimeters from my bedroom. Now, these are going to now be lit late into the evening with bright light, which is going to come into my bedrooms. Um, and also, an apex glass roof is extremely difficult to soundproof. So I will be able to hear music coming from the restaurant through that glass roof. I'm particularly concerned about it because at the moment it isn't a light at night. Um, the previous occupants of the marble shop Make it a question. did um, have a time switch, so the lights went off at midnight and I didn't have the problem of bright lights shining in my bedroom windows. So, Mr. Bull Williams, we need to turn this into a question, um, please. What do they plan to do? Well, so, what do you in, what do you intend to do to soundproof an apex glass roof? Unlikely. And also um, have um, some control over the lighting there. 
So sound, which is sound over the staircase to the basement. So sound and light, please, uh, Mr. Walsh, if you could yes. address those two points. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Chair. I think, um, and I hope Mr. Kant is on because he may be able to assist with this, and certainly Mr. Jones, but, but, but the position is this, that I think that, that, that there's been some confusion in relation to discussions um, previously in consultation. Uh, at one stage, but that is not the case in relation to this application, there was a possibility of relocating the entrance stairs and lifts to the um, neighbouring uh, marble uh, shop unit. Uh, and if that was so, the we, the acoustic consultant makes the point, and I think does so in the report actually, that it would be necessary to carry out acoustic tests to the gla that glazed roof light that has just been referred to, uh, and either provide acoustic secondary uh, glazing to it or a solid roof ceiling. But 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 that is not what is intended on this application, so it's not a part of it. Um, uh, th th that's the long and the short of it. But I wonder if Mr. Jones can confirm what I've just said. Um, but we've discussed this with Keith, uh, and Mr. Uh -huh. Haffey made it better uh -huh. to, to come in here. But we've said, I think we've agreed to a light pollution. I think light pollution is dealt with by, by the EHO anyway. Keith, you may want to jump in here. But we, we, we've committed to treat this building to the absolute Rolls Royce of acoustic standards. This goes over and above, I think, anything we've ever done in any restaurant I've certainly been involved in. And we would do it whether we're soundproofing glass, brick, concrete, wood. It's the same principle. Okay, thank can, can you. I, can I come, come in here as well, uh, Mr. Chairman? Basically, the the staircase will not be a part will not be part of the building that will have loud volumes of sound in it. Um, so you will have a certain amount of distance attenuation before any sound will escape the premises and go to Mr. Bill Williams's property. An awful lot of this will be basically a, um, some form of a further acoustical assessment as and when the, the building is developed and designed. But the most important thing is that it is highlighted at this stage so it can be addressed. Lights and things like that can be screened in such a way that the um, the light is not shining directly into somebody's property and the, the the way in which the light is reflected to the back can be controlled so that it doesn't go into Mr. Bill Williams's property. An awful lot of this can be addressed um, in the design and in the installation of the units. And I think this is something that we can work very closely with Mr. Bill Williams on um, at a later date to get it right. I know the, the applicants intend to get it right, and um, and I feel that we will be able to work together to achieve that. And uh, just, to, just to finish that, the, the uh, uh, con con condition, I think it's condition, yeah, condition 25, no, not 25, 24, um, uh, actually provides that the, the, the premises it shall be subject not only to an acoustic report, but a, an acoustic works, which, and the premises cannot open uh, until those works have been deemed to be uh, satisfactory by the Royal Borough's officers. So, uh, uh, as Mr. Mahaffey has just said, if this is an issue of which the environmental health think is important, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we're not relocating the entrance there, well, then that must be done during the course of the development. And it's a fair point that is, has been raised, but it will be picked up. OK, thanks, Mr. Walsh. I'm just going to turn back to Mr. Bull Williams to see if he's got any further questions. And then I see Councillor Williams has a uh, follow up. So, uh, Mr. Bull Williams. Yes. The, my other question is the proposed terrace, which is in the area below my drawing room or sitting room window, um, I mean, obviously, if it's a terrace, someone's going to use it. Since in the private dining room, there probably will only be serving staff um, on constant duty, they will have no authority to stop someone walking outside and smoking a cigarette. It says cigarettes will not be smoked there, but I don't see how an ordinary um, serving member of staff um, who will be present in the private dining room is going to be able to stop people doing that. 
So if we can treat that as a question, please, and uh, have a have an answer as to what, what uh, Mr. Walsh, what you and your team say to that. Yes, thank you, Chair. The answer to that is, is very straightforward. It is about management. As I said in opening, the actually the ratio of staff and management uh, to customers with, with this proposed venue is, and indeed in other Caprice venues, is, is much higher than normal. So it, it is not a situation where there will be only waiters, waitresses uh, available to monitor the premises. There are managers, duty managers are on on duty and are there to ensure that the prem, that the conditions on the license are complied with. And so uh, the, uh, one can rest assured that this isn't just going to be left to a. I'm in the licensing here. I beg pardon. Sorry. Councillor Williams, can you go mute, please? Sorry about that. Yes. It's a fair point. It's, it's, it, it, it comes to how premises are actually managed um, and um, th they will be managed to ensure that the conditions are met, including that people don't smoke outside. I mean, the, the conditions also require that no alcohol is consumed. So that, that must be policed and it's a question of appropriate management. And forgive me for repeating. Uh, the fact that the Caprice have, have a great deal of experience of ensuring that issues such as this are policed by management and monitored by management and have done so uh, in premises with residents above, adjacent, with external areas and otherwise, in a way which has not caused problems with residents in the past. Thanks, Mr Walsh. Mr Bull Williams, do you have any further questions? No, I don't have any further questions. I still doubt. You might have some comments, but they can stay. Uh, um, you can hold them until your uh, submission to us um, because you'll have a, a 10 minute slot to make comments with questions um, presently. Yeah. Um, so if you've got no further questions and uh, Ms Fullerton, any um, f further questions from you? No, thank you. OK, um, well, thanks very much to the, the pair of you for your questions. I'm just going to turn back to Councillor Williams, who's got a supplementary. Yes. Um, apologies for that distraction. The, the, um, yes, it was just that Mr. Bull Williams' first question. As far as I can see, that staircase is, is the main route by which people will go downstairs and indeed they, they use it to go to the toilets. Um, so it will be quite busy and um, therefore is it not the case that uh, that needs uh, it sound insulation of that that is is a very important for mr bull williams uh chair is mr kant uh, uh on and he he, he, be on. he he has been um uh, yes i'm here well i want you could could mr kant is our acoustic consultant and is familiar with the premises having done a thorough audit of it can you assist us with that mr kant Certainly. So, yes, we would uh, undertake an assessment of what the current level of sound transmission is through that roof light and the and the roof structure in general. And then at that stage, we can design an appropriate uh, acoustic ceiling, wall linings, etc., to to make um, that work and to achieve acceptable sound levels to Mr. Bull Williams flat and, and other flats along that facade. Okay. Thank you. And, and Right. Well, that, that would be in compliance with the condition uh, which is expressed, which is preferred here, uh, w which is to carry out an assessment of acoustics and to ameliorate the problem where it exists in a way that w w which must be to the satisfaction of of the Royal Borough's Environmental Health Department. You accept that, Mr Kant? Yes, that's correct. That yes. Sorry, that wasn't a question, was it? So, sorry. Uh, at, <laughs> at the time of doing our, our previous assessments on the on the structure, then the um, uh, that uh, that that side of the building was outside of the original design, um, and that's the only reason why we haven't done that at this stage. I see. Thanks, Councillor Williams. Did you have a follow up to that? Uh, no, I don't. OK, well, thank you very much indeed. And that uh, concludes the um, the case for the applicants. Thank you, Mr Walsh and your team. Um, it's now time for the responsible authorities to come on and Mr Mahaffey to uh, uh, state your position. And uh, you also have up to 10 minutes followed by questions. Yeah. Uh, good morning, um, Councillor. Um, basically, the first first thing I would say is I would 
I would really like to commend both the applicant and the residents for the hard work they put in to work together to come to resolutions on all their concerns. It does my heart good when we have um, everybody working together and understanding all the issues and being so positive in how we manage things um, to address th these concerns. The applicant has been very, um, very helpful and he's also been able to understand and appreciate the concerns that residents have. We met um, with uh, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Nzani um, probably about six to seven months ago when we went through the application and um, through a pre-application and I was able to explain to them what the problems were with this, these premises. The residents had a pretty awful time with the previous operators. The premises were not isolated and they were not insulated in such a way that the normal use of the restaurant gave rise to a very serious nuisance to them. Um, it wasn't to do with anything excessive, it was to do with the building not being capable of um, isolating the movement and the structure borne um, sound, as well as the airborne sound in the flats above. The premises weren't properly managed and as a result it was, it was, a, it was an, a very um, severe problem. You can't tar the, the new applicants with the, with the sins of the previous op op operators and it's it's reassuring to see that they are they're moving forward and have addressed these things. The most important thing, as far as I was concerned, was to get the acoustics right. And very much appreciate all the good work that Mr. Kant has done in providing his report. I very much endorse and understand everything that he has done. And when we've come back with issues, they've all been addressed. Basically, what we have is a box within a box. And um, it basically means that sound is, is that is generated on the premises is not transmitted into the structure and also that the, um, the structure of the building is capable of dealing with the voices, the conversations and, and everything. The issue of structural cleaning of the premises should be acceptable at all hours on the premises for the simple reason that the isolation should be fine, but we'll need to look at this as and when the works are done and um, we can do that through a through post completion tests, as well as uh, checking the works while they are in progress. Um, the other thing that we discussed in regards to the application is the external management plan. In my view, the external management plan is key to the oper to the successful operation of this business. We have to make sure that not only do we have the processes in place, but those processes have been identified and been tailored according to the manner in which the premises impacts on the residents and also to ensure that the um, mitigation that they have through those processes is fully um, relayed to the staff and then it is monitored and updated as and when issues arise. Now, I always take the view that if an external management plan is to be developed, it has to be developed in, in, in association with the residents. We need to be able to have the residents buy into this so that all the issues that have been outlined in it addresses all their concerns. And that is something which I feel the residents are very happy to do. And I'm very pleased that the, uh, that the operators of the business will be, will be considering that. Um, the fact, the fact too, that the um, operational plan is is is, a re is very much a revolving document or an open or a living document. It will need to be updated as and when issues arises, and these sorts of issues can be addressed through residents' meetings with the operators. I'm not very uh, keen to see. Um, um, residence meetings taking place on a biannual basis. It could well be that the meetings may need to be taken a bit um, um, sooner rather than later. And it may be that sometimes there'll be occasions when, when residence meetings are not uh, required um, on, a, on a biannual basis. I think it's very much um, down to the residents and to the operators for there to be a mechanism to trigger meetings as and when problems occur. Um, and and clearly that is something where where the liaison should be should be considered. Um, the other thing really I, I would bring to attention is that not only uh, in it's in regard to the glass conservatory, it's also going to be important for the premises to basically um, block out the noise from the tube line uh, with the glazing. 
um, you've got to remember what sound goes out also comes in. And for the sound uh, from the chid trains passing, it's going to have an effect on the ambience of the premises. Therefore, it's going to be very much in the interest of the premises to get the glazing at the rear done to highest standard to basically stop the sound ingress as well as the sound um, egress from the premises. Um, other than that, I, I don't really need to say an awful lot more. Um, I think an awful lot of it really now is down to residents to outline their concerns with regards to the uh, operation of the premises and for everybody to work together to get the external management plan um, developed in such a way that it addresses all the issues and to have some form of recourse um, to the premises as and when um, the, there are any issues arise. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mahaffey. And um, if I could turn to Councillor Williams, first of all, to see what questions he's got. Uh, yes, my only question was, uh, Mr. Mahaffey, related to, did you have any comments on the discussion we had on the, the, the point I was last raising concerning the uh, noise from that uh, staircase uh, down to the basement? Yeah. Mr. Mahaffey, are you still with us? Or are you? Uh... He's muted. Sorry, oh. I, was I was talking away there with myself muted. Oh, oh dear, right. Okay, well, sorry. I think sorry. you heard the question. Are you prepared yes. to start the answer again? <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, I would, it's really what I was intimating about the sound ingress from the tube line. Uh, the last thing the premises will want will be the noise from a tube going past and that interfering with the enjoyment of their customers in the premises. So if we are able to address that through the design of the, of the glazing on that, then basically sound that is generated inside the premises, which is not going to be of the same sort of level, is then not going to go out in such a manner to cause disturbance to, to Mr. Bill Williams. And I, I feel that that matter will be addressed in as part and parcel of the overall acoustical performance of the building. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Williams. Councillor Thaxter, do you have any questions for Mr Mahaffey? No, Chair, I don't have any um, questions for Mr Mahaffey's response. Great, thanks very much. Now, just one from me. Um, um, you say that there haven't been any complaints about the president, um, sort of noise complaints from the uh, this premises in the last 12 months. Well, there's obviously two good reasons for that. One, it went out, of, the previous operator went out of business, and two, Obviously, most places have been closed for much of the last 12 months. Um, the previous history, though, I think the news of um, the, the unhappy experience of caramel spread west into my ward, where we share a lot of Wellcome Trust estate. So I heard quite a lot about caramel. But um, can you give us an idea of what the previous history, both under Clara Caramel and from your corporate knowledge, the previous uh, occupant before caramel? Well, I've I've known Miss Fullerton for many, many years, and basically I've always had concerns with this. It's mainly to do with the type and style of the building. It's a con it was built in I think the 30s and 40s when they didn't put any form of insulation isolation screed on the concrete. Everything's tied together, the steel frame with the concrete, and as a result of that, any vibration that is, that is imparted into the structure just goes up through the building. And it's very much a case that the only way that you can deal with um, um, structure borne sound is to isolate the, the activity, um, impacting activity from the structure, and that has to be done at source. But nobody had done any major isolation works to the premises. And as a result, it was it was basically just going straight through the building and affecting a lot of residents. Um, and that's really what's done. It hasn't been it's not been something that has been done deliberately. It's just the nature and style of the building. Now, that is part of the reason why we were looking at the box in the box process here is to basically ensure that not only do we have the isolation, but we have the insulation as well to deal with the airborne side of it. And the fact that we are looking at a sound system with lots of little speakers means that the levels of sound from music and things like that inside the premises can be 
um, relayed at lower levels because you, the more speakers you have, the lower the level you can have to get the same sort of ambience within the premises. And an awful lot of that is to design something which is going to be more compatible with the type and style of operation of the business that uh, Caprice Holdings want to have here. They want people to be able to have conversations. They don't want to have to um, talk and raise voices while they eat their food. But at the same time, they want some sort of ambience to basically take away the the um, the background, the, the 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 other background noise from other tables. Um, so I, I I think that what we have done is we have identified the issue and we are now working towards a resolution to basically ensure that any work that is done is going to have a long term benefit for the operators. So from your, your corporate knowledge, um, the, the problems with the building were presenting an issue even before the uh, unfortunate period of Caramel's occupation. Would that be right? Yes, that would be correct. There was, there was a brasserie there before and there was always a transmission of sign through the structure. Um, and um, it's it, I, I think Ms Fullerton can probably clarify, uh, confirm this, that there was always complaints about noise from it, from chairs moving and people being in the premises. And a lot of it is the fact that people just hadn't thought about how the building structure can contribute to the transmission of sound to the neighbouring residents. OK, thanks, Mr Haffey. That's all my questions. Let me turn to the legal officer to see if she has any questions, uh, Ms Lemaziri. No questions from me, Chair. Thank you. Thanks very much. So let me turn to the applicant now. Mr Walsh, do you have any questions for, for Mr Mahaffey? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. No questions. Thanks, Mr Walsh. So now turning to the objectors, Ms Fullerton and Mr Bull-Williams, do you have any questions um, for Mr Mahaffey? No, no. Uh, Ms Mahaffey has been very good about making the various issues clear over the years. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks, Ms. Fuller. To Mr. Bull Williams, anything yes, from you? I agree. Um, Ms. Mahaffey has always been a great help um, and uh, has always listened to our complaints. Thanks very much, sir. That's um, so um, on that. Uh, Note, Mr. Mahaffey, um, that's the end of your uh, your case. So um, I'm now going to turn to the um, objectors in turn to give you um, ten minutes to offer your each ten minutes each to offer your submissions and your your comments, um, and then we'll do a joint question session with with both of you. So which of you would like to go first? I'll go first. Okay, Mr. Ms. Fullerton. Uh, first of all, it's quite important to say that. Uh, once you find yourself living above a restaurant and that did happen uh, after essentially I moved into the premises. Uh, I mean, it, it, when I first moved in, I did not have uh, a restaurant of, of the sort and nature it has been for over 20 years. Uh, in in this, it, it, it was originally a very small bistro, closed on a Sunday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so the various questions uh, that have been addressed to me over the years have been, why do you still live there? It, I really have got to emphasise, I have a ava no available choice with the changes in the law uh, and in the. A whole issue of property law and rental law uh, and so there isn't choice and therefore one has had to put up with it. Um, the uh, specific uh, points that I have raised have been addressed very largely by the uh, applicant that have been given to us. I think that's really quite important to say. Um, my two points, are if uh, the uh, committee is minded to accept effectively all the amendments in red, which I would ask them to do in effect of their, their entirety, uh, uh, I would like to raise just two points on them taking that as as read. Um, I am the flat that was immediately uh, affected by the fire. Uh, and you've seen the video that has been uh, shown uh, as to the effect. It was it was incredible and I did nearly die. 
uh, I'm still affected by it both as a, uh, a post-traumatic uh, syndrome and also, in fact, uh, physically in relation to the management of my flat. So I can only beg and stress uh, that uh, the uh, issue of the uh, flammable decorations be treated really seriously and uh, a heavy uh, condition be placed in the license in connection therewith. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very, very frightening, I, I have got to, to say that. Um, and <clears throat> you, you can see how my, my sitting room and bedroom are immediately above the proposed front door. Uh, and therefore, it remains an issue of constant fear. Uh, the other issue that I think, again stressing, that the applicants have been very helpful, Condition 25 discusses the management plan, uh, which, which, of course, it, it, the, the applicant will be uh, organising in any event. But I wonder if in, in that particular uh, section, some consultation uh, at a, a, a framing level could be uh, taken with the residents and that incorporated into the licence. Um, Subject to that, if, if if these issues are borne in mind, it is in the interests of the residents of this block to have a decent functioning restaurant. If we've got to have a restaurant, at least it be a respectable, good one, which we can then use ourselves. And that really is all I have got to say, Mr Chairman. Um, thanks, Ms. Fullerton. Could I just, um, as a matter of clarification, you referred to condition 25. Is that from the legal officer's um, list that went round yesterday? No, that, is that, your that, numbering? Is, that is the amended uh, uh, draft conditions that w arrived on our, our plates yesterday. OK, thanks very much. I know we've had a number of versions of it. And, yes, uh, this, this was the final one we received. Yes, uh, and it's a Microsoft Word document, I think. Yes, and and uh, the the obviously the one relating to decorations, which is proposed by the objectors, number twenty eight. I would really yeah. like that to be heavily strengthened. Okay, I found I found that one uh, while you were speaking. That's uh, great. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Fullerton. So let me turn to Mr. Bull Williams to um, uh, make uh, um, submissions, and you again, so have up to ten minutes. Yes. Well. I mean, when I moved into Crompton Court, there wasn't a restaurant underneath me. It was a studio um, making artificial decoration. And the um, marble shop was a photographer's studio. So I didn't have any noise at all. Then from the time the first restaurant opened, um, I've had certain problems, certainly with noise. Um, but eventually when the brasserie had it we did sort of more or less come to some sort of arrangement that they did um, keep the noise levels down but we still had to complain regularly because it wasn't always so the last people who were there caramel we had we were subjected to six months of intense noise while they were working on the premises. They were often working on a Saturday and Sunday, which they're not supposed to have been doing anyway. And although I complained about it, nothing was done. Um, and then when they closed after the fire and they sublet it, the people who moved in spent another four months doing extremely noisy work and um, putting up new interior decorations, etc. Um, I realised that when um, the new restaurant is being worked on, there's going to be a lot of noise, but I would be obliged if it was certainly confined to being during the week and up until midday on a Saturday 
and not all day Sunday as we have had on previous occasions. That's all I've got to say, really. OK, thanks very much indeed, uh, Mr. Ball Williams. And so I'll turn to my um, colleagues on the committee to um, see if they've got any questions for both of you, starting with Councillor Williams, please. Um, I think my only, sorry, my only question really was uh, to refer to a comment Mr. Walsh made about the um, dedicated phone number. Uh, I mean, I note that uh, the only objection have come from uh, uh, Crompton Court, and from your point of view, would it seem reasonable that uh, the uh, as long as the uh, information is communicated to residents of of Crompton Court, that that would be sufficient? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I th we did find that this was promised before in a license, uh, but was not complied with. Uh, we need serious availability of a telephone number. I, I would also add that when we tried to use the one we did uh, late at night, because the noise went on sometime to two and three o'clock in the morning, uh, we couldn't get any replies. They were The calls were just totally and completely ignored. I think it's quite important perhaps that not only uh, Mr. Paul Williams and I as the immediately affected persons, but also the porter who happens also in his flat to be uh, affected, all have availability of such a telephone number. Uh, thank you, that's all. Thanks very much. Councillor Thaxter, uh, do you have any questions for the um, objectors? Uh, she mentioned she did mentioned the fire safety, so I just wanted to know how she feels now and what would she like the applicants to do to address the situation moving forward. Oh, it's 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 very difficult. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I do not wish to be in fear. I do not wish ever to go through an experience like that again. There have been four fires uh, at this restaurant since I have lived here. Uh, the uh, property has had to be evacuated on on four separate occasions. Uh, this one was the worst because it. it if I had not accidentally been awake, not only would I have been dead, overcome by the smoke and flames, uh, my window having broken, but there would have been no alarm given to the block until the fire itself had caught up. Because I was there, I was able to waken the porter and waken the block. Uh, so I, that's only said emotionally, of course, uh, to to stress the importance of some proper solution. I do not wish to stand in the way of a respectable restaurant trading, but some assurance by the applicants of really serious safeguardings on this, particularly, as I say, since any such decorations will be below my window. Thank you, Mrs. Fullerton. Thanks, um, Councillor Thaxter. I, I just have um, one for uh, um, for you. And there was a debate earlier about frequency of residence meetings. Um, uh, Mr. Walsh mentioned it as uh, drew attention to the options of two, three or four times a year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mahaffey also commented on uh, on this subject. Um, what, what are your thoughts um, on meetings? Well, first of all, the meetings we've had to date have been very helpful, but that would always be the way. Uh, the uh, I, And indeed, we have had meetings in the past with other owners that have not complied. So some sort of uh, at least timetable should be inserted, I think. I don't think it should be over much, and it can e very often in in many uh, at many times potentially be dispensed with if necessary, but only by agreement, including the agreement of, of some responsible member of this block. We have, a, unfortunately, uh, a, a mixed uh, tenure. 
Uh, and that means that there is a, a management com company who've technically got uh, the management under the landlords, but the landlords themselves have tenants and there is a certain amount of dichotomy between the two. Uh, the Mr. Bill Williams and I and I think two other people in the block at most are still the direct tenants from the landlord. Uh, our landlord and our landlord's agents are not necessarily prepared to be involved in any of these issues. So that it the consultation would need to be both with the management company and with the the remaining tenants uh, uh, as a block, as, uh, as a separate thing. But some sort of connection in each of those blocks would be helpful until, I will say, the very es elderly residents uh, <laughs> no longer are here. <laughs> we go down one a year, <laughs> just about. Well, um, <laughs> thank you for your candour, Ms. Fullerton. But I, I, I mean, would you say, um, uh, I mean, the proposal was t twice a year for formal uh, meetings. Would, would have, you say that's sufficient? Well, I would have thought more than sufficient in normal circumstances. So it, it's the, the issue is uh, is uh, once they're sort of required is how they're managed and uh, who gets invited. I, uh, and and I, I would really like consultation uh, again with those two blocks in mind uh, on on the the uh, uh, production of the management proposal uh, as earlier mentioned. Uh, I think that could be helpful. Uh, I'm certainly reassuring. And, and presumably your your managing agent is Savills then on behalf of Wellcome Trust, is that? Uh, That's absolutely correct. Yes. All right. We've got a lot of Wellcome Trust in my uh, ward as well. So you, um, we're familiar with them over here. OK, um, those are all my um, questions. So let me let me turn to the legal officer and see if she's got any questions. No questions, Chair. I'll just save anything I have for the condition session. Right. Yes, of course. So I'm I'm going to ask Mr. Mahaffey to um, come in and ask any questions of the objectors. And you might like to, um, in fact, I will observe, and you can come in on this. That the in terms of the building of uh, or the fitting out of the of the um, premises, um, uh, that that's not a matter for the licensing committee, but it does have to be. Um, uh, the building work does have to comply with the code of construction practice, which is a separate uh, matter. But Mr. Mahaffey can perhaps uh, touch on that in his question to you. Um, I, I don't really have any questions, but I, I know that when the place is being redeveloped, we will be looking at um, serving section 60 on the site to basically limit the hours of noisy work. Um, so that we have some balance for residents on site, and that's something which we will we will work with um, the applicants on. Um, there's nothing to stop them doing quiet works outside those hours, but it's just a matter of um, of, of the potential noise that can go up through the building. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any any questions of the objectors, sir. Okay, thanks, Mr. Mahaffey. Uh, Mr. Walsh, um, finally, do you have any questions for the um, two objectors? Uh, very briefly, uh, Chair. Uh, the first, Ms. Fullerton, relates to the the awful fire that you had to endure. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to ask you, uh, uh, we have agreed, Condition 28, that there shall be no flammable decorative flower or foliage displays or garlands used to decorate the front of the premises. Do, do, do you accept if 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 that is complied with, then the, the then the, the the risk of fire from such would be eradicated. If, if well, mitigated at least. Uh, obviously, there it lies within outside my power to be able to work out whether something is flammable or or inflammable, uh, so long as it is a condition. Uh, then uh, we have someone who's answerable for it, which yeah. frankly has been one of the major issues in the major fires the country has been dogged with in yes. flats. Well, quite. 
Um, uh, and and just uh, finally, in, rel in relation to um, Mr. Mahaffey's uh, liaison with you, with you, which you've been very complimentary about, I, I, I hope you would accept that that Caprice have joined in with that. Uh, I thought I made that clear. Yeah. I, I I have been I have been very. I find it extremely helpful, and the meeting was extremely productive. Uh, very reassuring to have such a relationship, which I hope continues. Yes, and 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 just and and just very finally, in relation to condition twenty five, which concerns the um, the, the management, management plan. Yeah. Um, I, I I hope you you, you would accept that given that twenty that the condition twenty nine requires that there should be regular meetings, and you you heard what Mr. Mahaffey said about that. That, that they can occur at any time when there are concerns expressed by you or other residents of Cromsey. Yeah. That will obviously and must inform the uh, uh, procedures and management controls sure. in the management plan. So the two conditions go together. I hope you would accept to ensure that your that the, 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 your concerns are uh, met about that. Well, I mean, obviously. The, the the financial management, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the business element cannot be particularly part of the residence and it should not be so. And indeed, it's almost certainly in various areas will be confidential. Uh, however, uh, I feel that it is in that section when the plan itself is being formulated that some uh, input from the residents might be helpful. Well, I actually, and, and their comments on the various relevant sections of the management plan could indeed perhaps oil the wheels. I mean, we'll, we don't want to foresee anything, but we will be coming up to tables and chairs, licenses and such things. We can mitigate these issues by discussing uh, them at a slightly earlier stage, and, and that will be welcomed. It's, it's only input. Frankly, the, the people of this block do not meddle with the restaurant. They go, they want a restaurant they can go to, enjoy, feel welcoming in if we've got have to have a restaurant below us. Uh, so it's not an issue of tension if we can help it. All right. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much indeed, Mr. Walsh and uh, Ms. Fullerton, Mr. Bull Williams. Thank you very much for presenting your your case, uh, uh, your cases so eloquently, and for answering um, the questions. So that is the end of your section of this. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to invite parties to sum up um, because this has been a relatively um, short hearing. So I'm now going to turn to the legal officer to um, go through the potential con conditions and to um, offer any legal advice to the panel. So, uh, Mr. Le Maziria. Thank you, Chair. Right. OK. Um, I'd like to go through each of the conditions, obviously, because we're being filmed rather than just accepting them generally. So going to condition one, if Mr. Walsh could confirm whether he is happy with condition one, please. I'm so sorry. Uh, I think most of them are your yes, conditions. Yes, it, absolutely. Yeah, can, okay. can I say, if it, if it helps, that, that we are we are we are satisfied with all of the conditions which which uh, you have set out in that schedule, mm -hmm. uh, except those uh, those ones which I've had comment on, which I'm happy to do briefly again, if, if that would help. I think because we're being recorded and it's being live streamed, I think it's helpful just to go through each condition separately, albeit quickly oh, the ones that are agreed. Yeah, it's just that people who um, uh, are watching it externally won't, um, won't have had a chance to kind of read through all the draft conditions. So you're happy with condition one? Yes, we are. Happy with condition two? Yes. So condition three, the only amendment I was going to make at Mr. Mahathy's request was to remove the words to be agreed by the Director of Environmental Health. So are you happy with condition three with that removal? Uh, yes. Thank you. I, I, I think I think what we would say about that is we would, I can see why Mr. Mahathy doesn't want it as part of the condition, but we would seek to do it in liaison with Mr. Mahathy, but it doesn't have to be part of the condition. Thank you. Uh, condition four, legible notices, are you happy with that? Yes. 
Right, condition five, I've added in the extra words, all tables and chairs are to be rendered unusable as soon as possible thereafter and by no later than 22, 30 hundred hours. Are you OK yeah. with that? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Condition six, you happy with that? Yes. Condition seven? Yes. Now, condition eight, I think you made, um, you, you, you had some concerns about the extra wording I offered, but I think the residents implied that they would like the words kept in. Are you happy with the words in red kept in? Well, um, no. I, I, I did express a concern about a, a telephone number. Uh, and given that the concerns here really are primarily from, from the residents of, of, of Compton Court, we, we, we think that as long as they have got the, uh, the, the, the relevant phone number, it's enough. We do have a bit of a concern about expressing it, uh, putting a phone number and, as it were, publishing it in the window. But I, I don't know because we have been trying to use Snapchat a conversation thing because I can't take instructions. And it might be that Mr. Jones has has changed his view about it. I, I suspect not. But if he has, he might. It is just our standard condition. But perhaps if Mr. Jones could chip in here. That yes, would be it may well be that that's now. Accepted. This is um, this is um, condition eight. Yes. yes. It's just a standard condition that all premises have i don't see it's controversial so so you would like the red words so included I, you'd like my phone number the dps's phone it, number so it, anyone who has a complaint can easily contact the person yeah it would be a dedicated number it doesn't have to be anybody's personal number uh to contact in case of concern sure so that's agreed thank you uh, miss the Mazuria, before we um, carry on, I know you're, you're uh, busy asking Mr Walsh his views on the, the conditions, but uh, we do have other parties in the room and they need to comment. So um, uh, Ms Fullerton had a hand up on this phone number question. So could I bring her in, please, to comment? Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I must say I can understand the applicant's slight hesitation here. That is why I... Uh, because displayed under designated number means almost nothing. You just put it on an answering machine. What I am much more interested in the practical element rather than the 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 um, s sort of s symbolic uh, uh, gesture of putting it uh, visible f uh, from the public highway. I'm much much more concerned to ensure that we actually have it. I believe you do have it also as part of that condition. Uh, it's also okay. being added. Fair well. enough. Well, well, you know, it does. I, I, I leave it to 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 uh, negotiation as to where. Uh, so long as we know we have it, uh, I can understand that it might be desirable for passing people, but designated no, uh, designated only in as much as it's answered as well, uh, not not just a, a symbolic one. Thank All you right. Very much, Thank you very much. The panel, the panel have heard the debate, and it'll be for us to make the decision uh, okay. on this when we retire. So, um, so move on, please, Mr. Lemuris, Thank you. Going to condition nine. Are you happy with my suggested alternative wording, Mr. Walsh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Condition ten. I know you raised a query on. Uh, I think you're happy with it, but you wanted to tweak the words yes. to a. How, what wording are you well, suggesting? I, 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 just, I mean, perhaps it's just interpretation, perhaps it's not necessary, but uh, one might say um, a member of staff uh, uh, drawn from a pool uh, of persons nominated in writing who are conversant with the operation of the CCTV system. Okay, fine. So adding the words drawn from a pool of persons. Okay, of, of, yes, of, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, that's, fine. that's That's practical. Yep. That seems acceptable. Thank you. Right, going to condition. Uh, before we, Ms. Yeah. Lemazuri, before we move on, we need to find out what the other parties think of that. Um, so, Ms. Fullerton, uh, Mr. Bill Williams. Uh, you... I, I can see the practicality of that. It's acceptable. Uh, the, the applicant's suggestion. Thank you. Ms. Lemazuri, carry on, please. Thank you. Going to condition 11, are you happy with that? Yes. Condition 12. Yes. Now, I think I saw the word five persons in your management plan and then six persons in your condition. Um, 
Uh, are you sticking with six per? Would you rather stick with six persons at this stage? Uh, yes, please, because I, I must say I did think it was six persons in the in the updated management plan. Okay, beg your pardon. Okay, thank you. Um, Thirteen. Are you happy with that? Yes. <clears throat> Fourteen. Are you happy with that? Yes. Fifteen. Are you happy with that? Yes. Sixteen. I've just added in some extra words in red which comply with our model condition. So, are you happy with those additional words, please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> condition seventeen. I've just added in the word and. Yes. Are you happy with that. Condition eighteen. Um, are you happy with the words in red? Yes. Thank you. Condition nineteen. Are you happy with that? Yes. Condition 20, I've altered that slightly to read the base, the terrace to the basement private dining room shown marked on the plan of the premises shall not be used for smoking by customers or staff at any time, nor shall it be used by customers or staff between the hours of 2100 and 10, 10 o'clock the following day. Are you happy with that? Yes. Thank you. Um, 21, all windows and doors... And this is, I mean, I might need a bit of clarity from you on this, including the bifolding doors and windows at the front of the premises, which I presume are going to stay, are they? They're not going to be changed as a part well, of it. I did wonder about this. I, I, I mean, can Mr. Jones just help with, yeah. with a particular condition? Because it's an, I know this has been agreed because we took instructions on, on your schedule, uh, but I'm just double checking. Um, condition 21. Yeah. The, the bifolding doors and windows being closed after 2100 hours yeah. save for the access and egress uh, yes. from the main front door is agreed right thank are you, you to, are you going to keep the bifolding doors as part of your redevelopment we are you are thank you that's wonderful lovely All right condition 22 um i think mr mahathy confirmed that as a result of the acoustic works, there's no need to restrict the hours of cleaning between 2300 and 7 o'clock the following day. So I propose to remove the words in red. Are you happy with that? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, let's just go to the objectors because this was a point of debate earlier. Um, uh, Ms Fullerton, uh, are we with the, yes. party? the panel will have to make a decision on this. But of course, of course. Uh, uh, we, we first of all, uh, we would like it to be stressed that the exit uh, for the staff be used in Pelham Street, uh, and we we have had problems with radios and shouting and almost parties by the cleaning staff uh, and indeed I think in the past because no one has real control over necessarily uh, contract staff of this sort uh, that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the they've even stayed overnight at times all night long so there does need to be very strict control on this uh, we we do understand again the commercial uh, requirements on the company in arranging cleaning staff. So um, I think definitely departure days and and fairly strict control by the management on, on this issue would be helpful. Um, I, I don't, chair, in that regard, I would say that that would be captured by the management plan. Um, that that's certainly one of those which would yeah. have to be incorporated with the management plan. This is okay. the very point, reason why I wished some discussion and representation on the management plan. Thanks. Thank you. The panel's heard the um, heard the discussion, and we'll make a decision uh, when we retire. So please carry on, Miss uh, Lemaziria. Thank you, Chair. So just to clarify, um, you're going to make a decision yourself about whether to keep in the words in red or not. Is that correct? Um, well, we've heard the discussion. Yes, yes it right. is our final decision. What, okay. what happens in all of these um, conditions and any others we might want to put in. But um, um, we're listening to the debate very carefully. Thank you. Going on to condition 23. Are you happy with that? Mr. Walsh? Yes, thank you. Uh, condition 24. Uh, yes. Now, condition 25. This is where the residents would said they would like their input. But then you've referred to the um, residents meeting. So. Um, 
are you agreeable at this stage to kind of adding in resident consultation to condition 25 or would you prefer well, it, it to be dealt it, with by condition 29? Yeah, I did. Well, if, if it's going to be amended to, to that effect, it's uh, the, the I, I just noted myself because consultation could be taken in, in all sorts of ways when it's in a in a condition. But in yeah. the second sentence of 25, it begins the plan shall. Yeah, you might uh, it, it, it might uh, deal with the situation, the plan comma, which uh, may be informed by uh, concerns expressed by residents of Thompson Court, comma, shall detail the procedures, management controls and practical steps. I can I'll just bear with, which may be, which may be, informed, may be by informed by concerns of residents of Compton Court. Concerns expressed by residents of Compton Court, yes. Thank you. Okay, so that the committee can take a view on that. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Fullerton has a hand up, so I'd yeah, like to comment. I, I, think, I think informed's too light a word. Uh, uh, that informed is, is, is no commitment of any sort at all. Uh, I, I would have liked uh, um, a little bit more of that. Now, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, is, 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 is a management plan a rolling issue or, or is it a... a, a, a as I see it, it can't be opened until the plan permission will not be used under the terms of license on the plan has been submitted to the Council's Director of Environment and General Health. Now, I, I can't see that such a document is likely to be confidential or that confidential as opposed to a responsible member of, of the uh, committee or, or a responsible resident. Uh, informed is much too light. Do you, do you um, have a do you have a stronger word that you uh, would well, propose? I, I know we're thinking on our feet I, here, Mrs. Pullison. Yes, just a minute till I, I see it again. It's it's my machine isn't rolling awfully well, so let's see it here. Um, can, can I suggest just while you're reading that? Yes. That the, the plan comma which should take into account concerns expressed by. No, it's the same. <laughs> Well, it, it can't be much firmer than that. But a bit... uh, it, it really, I'm looking for actually is a certain amount of it, 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 it's it's that we know what it is, but it needs a certain amount of us cooperating within those plans to to make it really work smoothly i think if we understand what's happening then we're less likely to object uh and objection has is is a bigger thing somehow it's something that could be smoothed over in some way or another um I can't exactly see how to amend it, actually, at the moment. OK, so in which case, um, uh, without an alternative, we've heard the um, two suggestions from Mr Walsh, which he thought about, and I think we'll um, we'll take that one away um, as a panel and consider it um, in some detail when we uh, when we retire. Perhaps a lawyer could think of, of what will give some uh, cooperation to uh, within the issue. Well, I, I, I don't know whether Mr. Mahaffey would have uh, any 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 thing to say about this. Um, uh, actually, because uh, it, it, it is a it is a difficult thing when operational management plans are subject to yes. mandatory consultation. It can get tricky. Well, 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 okay, well, okay, Ms. Fullerton, just a moment, please. May I call in Mr. Mahaffey um, because I think he he's got a lot of experience of these um, these things and might have a form of words that he could offer offer us now. Otherwise, we'll take it away. I feel that residents do need to be consulted in regards to the exterior management plan, but I think also it could be something in the external management plan which basically says that at regular re meetings um, they can be um, issues can be brought up and um, and things can be asked to be um, to inc incorporated. Um, a lot of it, a lot of um, external management plans, being living documents, they take on board people's think, uh, people's uh, views. But in a lot of occasions, what is feasible to go into them and to be done is not always what residents ex 
expect, but there should be some form of uh, understanding of the problem and a commitment to work together to solve the problem. Um, it, it is possible, therefore, in condition 29, to, which deals with the uh, regular meetings, um, uh, where it says the, 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 the premises license holder shall organise and accommodate meetings to discuss the operation of the premises, including the uh, management plan Thank you. with residents of Crompton Court. It, it's, forgive me for saying Mr Chairman, but it's the the issues are likely to arise at the commencement if you get your commencement you see the premise should not be used under the license it, it's at that stage that the input can be best given so that further problems just do not arise uh and i i putting the the riders that i have done in uh um what is 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 Mr. Um, oh gosh, sorry. Uh, give, give me uh, the the gentleman's first proposal. He said uh, informed. Um, let me think. Yes, uh, it was informed. Was the which shall be informed by meetings with the residents. Okay. Yes, con the concerns of the residents. Correct. That was the initial proposal from Mr. Walsh. Something you have until uh, so it would go in in, in the second line until license in there uh, informed by the residents. Uh, um. yeah, can I interject at this stage, please? I think that um, Mr. Walsh's suggestion about the additional wording into condition twenty nine will assist with um, condition 25, to be honest with you. I think it's quite reasonable, the wording he's suggested. But obviously, Thank it's down to make the final decision. The Missouri area, yes. I, I, I'm thinking Ms Fullerton may just have one more sentence of what she was saying there. And then I think I do want to bring Mr Mahaffey in because he's got a suggestion. And then uh, I think we've probably done this one to death. So, Mr Mahaffey, please. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was just basically just going to say that some of our, our more our, all our premises in the borough, when they start operating, the what they write as an um, an event or an external management plan always needs to be tweaked because something has been forgotten. Um, so I, I would say really it's an evolving document and clearly um, it is something which I feel the, the residents' meetings and the for, would be the forum to bring up those sorts of concerns. Yeah. Right, and I know we're not going to solve this um, problem completely in 100% uh, in what we do here. Um, Ms. Lazirio, have you got enough there to to be drafting and to give us advice when we retire? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm fine. Okay. With that. All right. In that case, we'll we'll close that debate and move on, please, to the next condition on your list. So condition 26, outside of the opening hours on the premises license, staff would only use the entrance on Pelham Street. Did I hear during the course of the hearing that the staff are always going to use the entrance on Pelham Street regardless? Uh, no, because they, 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 they may use the main entrance during opening, when, when the opening hours, it wouldn't be appropriate to prohibit staff from coming out of the main, in and out of the main door. But outside of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, opening, then it should be the Pelham Street Entrance, which, which actually answers one of the concerns that was expressed by Ms Fullerton a, a few moments Thank ago. You. Okay, so the 26 as it is shall stay. Okay. Um, 27, are you happy with our suggested alternative wording, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to 28, this was about the flammable displays. Are you happy with that condition? Yes. And um, Ms Fullerton, are you happy that that, um, from the best of your knowledge, not being a fire expert as none of us are are you I, I, I that think that expresses yes. the, the point there's, there's at the moment i can't see anything that can be firmer than that great thank, thank you. you very much right so going to condition 29 um i think that miss fullerton would like them twice a year i think she agreed earlier on um and i think we've agreed to include the wording 
um, including the external management plan as part of the discussions. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that I need to add into that. Um, and I think that Miss Fullerton made it clear that she wanted the the management company and the residents to be consulted. Are you okay with that? Yes, thank you. Um, well, just making the point that it's a minimum of twice a year, and of course the just just yeah. so Miss Fullerton is, is is aware that, that whenever concerns are expressed by residents on a particular issue, they could be meeting to discuss those. So they can be ad hoc as well. Yes. And I am asked to go back briefly uh, uh, on my messaging system uh, because it's of great importance to the operator. Condition 22, uh, I know that the chair, of course, uh, says that it's a matter for the committee at the end of the day, but, uh, but I'm asked to, to ensure that, that, Chair, you have the point that we make that because the premises have been fully soundproofed, uh, if they are to allow to open mm -hmm. and fully attenuated, that the the, the restriction of, of cleaning taking place from 11 o'clock until 7 o'clock in the morning is one which is unnecessary and actually would be difficult from an operational point of view. Uh, I, I know that you will take that into account when you are considering, but I, I raise that because my clients have expressed a concern. I'm obliged, Mr Walsh, uh, to you for emphasising the importance of that point to you. Thank you, Chair. Right, I think we've done condition 29 now. So moving to condition 30, are you happy with when it's on the screen, condition 30? Yes. Are you happy with condition 31? Yes. 32? Yes. 33? Yes. 34? Yes. 35? Yes. 36? Yes. And 37? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Are there any other conditions which sprung to mind during the hearing that you wish to add? We have, uh, I think we've discussed them all in some uh, some detail, so uh, no. Thank you. I'm finished then. Thank you. OK, do you have any other legal advice for the panel before we retire? No, that's no. it. OK, are there any comments from the legal officer before we close, Ms Johnson? The licensing officer, sorry. <laughs> giving a qualification you don't hold yet. Maybe you will, I don't know. <laughs> I have no comments, but I do believe um, Mr Walsh has a request, um, but I have no comments regarding the today's proceedings. Oh, OK. Um, well, Mr Walsh, I'm happy to hear another request. Well, it, it, uh, it, it is a request, but it's it's not one for, to be dealt with now until after you've deliberated. Uh, I, um, and I won't say anything about it now because you need to deliberate and come to a decision. But we, we, we who practice um, as lawyers in the in the in the field of licensing, and many are, are are aware of Pat Crowley's recent passing. And I, I don't want to say anything about it now. But if you feel it appropriate, um, I, I might have just a, a sentence or two. But but obviously after you've come to a decision. But if you don't feel it's an appropriate time. So be it. But if you felt it was, then uh, I, I'm asked to say just a couple of words about it. Well, I, I think, Mr. Walsh, because um, we we don't come back on the um, virtual hearings to announce our decision, uh, um, we we notify parties in writing. Uh, we do close at the deliberation stage. So um, I think it would be very appropriate for you to uh, make your your point now uh, and for the record. Well, I'll be very so happy to hear it. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, Chair, I, 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 uh, Pat, Pat Crowley, uh, who, as you know, was a senior licensing uh, uh, officer and indeed uh, in regulatory and other aspects for so many years, um, who many of us knew, and I've been asked to say a couple of words by a number of lawyers who knew him. He was highly respected by legal practitioners in, in the licensing field. Um, uh, and there's no doubt about it that he was a dedicated uh, professional and he was a warm uh, and kind man, but he could be pretty tough at times, especially with operators, lawyers. Uh, and he, he really will be missed. Uh, and our thoughts are very much with uh, his family uh, uh, at the present time. But I, I just wanted to say that on behalf of the lawyers who 
knew him well and who practice in this sphere. Well, thank you, Mr. Walsh, for those words. And those of us who are councillors and met particularly members of the licensing committee um, will absolutely echo your your words. We much miss him and uh, his uh, fantastic advice to us. And I know my colleague, Councillor Williams, has been chair of licensing in the past and uh, will particularly echo that, as would everybody else who's been involved in, in licensing and all of his team who valued him, uh, his team of officers who valued him as a, as a fantastic boss for, for many years. But thank you for those um, for, for those words. And um, I, I can see Mrs. Le Mazuria has got her hand up, so let me bring her in. Thank, thank you, Chair. Just one last final comment, and it's more, more by way of an informative. Um, your, your clients will need a tables and chairs licence or a pavement licence to place tables and chairs on the highway outside the premises. Of course, most certainly we know that. Yeah, Thank, thank you for you. reminding us. Um, yes, I, I just wanted to uh, thank Mr. Walsh for his comments about Pat Crowley, who we'll all, all, all very much miss, and just ask if uh, uh, our office of way could be uh, found to convey uh, Mr. Walsh's comments to his family, because because I know you, you're a very senior member of the uh, licensing bar, and uh, so uh, I mean you're uh, and that you were making the comments on, as you said, on behalf of colleagues. Uh, and indeed, for the governance officers, this this meeting is recorded, so. Uh, uh, it might be appropriate for them to see this um, uh, or to have the opportunity at some appropriate time for them to see what's been said about our much missed former colleague. Um, uh, um, Chair, Chair, it's Heidi Tickham here and I just wanted to say that um, we welcome the comments that have been made by uh, Stephen Walsh. We appreciate because uh, Pat Crowley was a highly respected member of the licensing uh, fraternity. Um, th these uh, meetings are recorded and I'm, I feel sure that we would be able to send a copy to his uh, family because so that they hear the nice words that has been spoken about him. Well, thank you very much uh, for that intervention, Ms. Tickham. Um, and so if there are no other interventions from uh, um, from any parties, um, that, that brings us to the conclusion of the hearing um, this morning. I'd like to thank all parties for the uh, very professional way you've presented your cases to us. Um, we will retire now to deliberate. Um, governance will notify the parties of the decision within five clear working dates, and the full written determination will follow uh, later. Uh, so the hearing is closed and the live broadcast will end, and I wish you all a good afternoon. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.